coach from Oklahoma to Texas. She's won about every award that our profession offers. She is a magnificent human. She is a personal role model for me. And I have to say something. This woman is one of the first straight talking, speak to power human beings uh, in our profession that just wouldn't shut up <laughs> until we listen. So give it up, please, for Glenda Ferguson.
Heritage would be the only school at that time with three key coaches. So away we came. <coughs> Again, the coaches were told that we were awesome. We were given wine, cheese, and appreciation. Anything we wanted except a parking place. <laughs> <laughs> I was towed one time, but I would sit in this park. Um, and all of that, Emory was kind of an oasis for us. It was sort of like, sounds kind of silly, but it was an oasis in the middle of the debate desert. We were appreciated, and that didn't always happen. Anyway, I judged the second round of debate, and I met the kids for lunch. Keep in mind, this was before the days of cell phones. Yes, I am that old. We went to lunch after I judged the second round. We came back, and as I came back and walked into the duck, I heard this delicate voice from the second floor. If Glenda Ferguson is within the sound of my voice, please report to the tap room. I thought, well, I already know who I am. <laughs> they did indeed. I had forgotten to turn in my ballot and had held up the entire tournament for over an hour. It would be a few more years before I would receive my key. <laughs> I do remember, though, everything about the day when I received my key. Uh, I remember what I was wearing. I remember the day that they pinned me, pinned on my corsage. I remember wearing that enormous key around my neck and going out and saying to the kids, Look, look what happened. And they said, yeah, that's great. Parents are out. Can you get us to our rounds? <laughs> <laughs> they do have a way, you know. I wanted to behave myself, so I listened closely to the instructions about judging the final round. We were to turn in our ballots, go outside to the courtyard, and never disclose our decision. So I judged the round. This time I turned in my ballot. I went to the courtyard and was immediately attacked by at least 10 coaches wanting to know how I judged. Everybody was afraid because they, would, they wanted to have somebody that was going to vote the same way they had. I'll have to tell you, these coaches were all turf coaches. <laughs> um, debate ain't easy if you're a drama coach. <laughs> uh, one more story about this tournament. One, I think, that exemplifies. <coughs> One year, my team was debating the fifth round in the nurse's building. There was a break for dinner, and I had the kids pack up their stuff and tell them we could go to dinner and come back and get it and debate the sixth round. When we got back, the other team's evidence was all over the room, and ours was gone, stolen. Bill said that we would, that the kids would break anyway without debating the fifth round. So I was on the hunt. When I was on my third dumpster on campus looking for our evidence, I ran into several Emory debaters who were also looking for our evidence. They were sleep deprived, they were frustrated, they were embarrassed, and they said, just go home. We're gonna continue looking all over campus and see what we can do. Well, we didn't find it, but they did not have to do that for us that they were from Emory. My kids wanted to go ahead and debate anyway. The plan was to win the toss, go negative, and go to Grand Top County and every night. <laughs> <laughs> you know, to tell you the truth, I considered that for a minute. But then I said no. Well, I did promise Kara that I would be brief. So now to my request. Emory has taught me, if Emory, if Emory has taught me anything as a young coach, it was that civility, listening, and empathy were very important in today. That teaching kids to respect other options or opinions different from their own was important. That the First Amendment meant freedom of speech and not abuse of speech. That was Emory's legacy to me. But you have heard from others that we have to do something about that. And this is our legacy. I am honestly worried that the First Amendment is in danger, and I believe that once that amendment goes, the others will soon follow. 
people race to embrace divisive language, obscenity, and even cruelty. If <coughs> we don't agree with them, agree with them, they beat us about the head. And you all don't know your Copeland, but if that with the way that you handle disagreements, we would have killed each other years ago. <laughs> <coughs> this is not hyperbole. I really believe you and this audience and others like you really may be the only way to solve this problem. Certainly the people we've elected are not doing it. And it's going to come with what you teach your kids. This issue of legacy like it or not, kids really do listen to you, believe me. Please, please take this seriously. I know you can do it. I know you will do it because I too think you're awesome. Thank you.